We're going to be looking in Revelation chapter 15. Revelation 15 tonight. Revelation 15. And I'm going to give you something just a little extra. And I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Some of you may be interested in this. Some of you may not be. But I, I do a whole study on uh, the constellations and the zodiac. I want you to look. Uh, we're going to we're going to 15. Well, go to 15, and we'll start there. Uh, look at verse one. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up with the wrath of God. Now, notice there's a sign in heaven. Look at, uh, look at chapter 12. <clears throat> Go back to chapter 12. And uh, I want to show you something. Look at chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. So 15, you've got a sign in heaven. And 12, you've got a great wonder in heaven. Uh, a woman clothed with the sun and uh, the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. All right. I don't know how many of you have ever, and I'm not talking about your horoscope. I'm not talking about getting up every morning and reading your horoscope in the, in the paper and finding out if you're going to trip sometime along the way today. I'm not talking about that. That's, that's something totally different. But now, God did put the stars in heaven for a reason. And Psalm 19 says, verse 1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. So when you look up into the heavens, it will tell you a story. Now, um, if you will look, uh, I'm not going to do a lot of this. But I will do just a little bit, and maybe sometime here in the near future, we'll do a whole study on, on all of these. Uh, you know, the 12 signs. Each one of them goes with one of the months and all that kind of thing. Anyway, um, it starts with, according to the Bible now, it starts with Virgo. Virgo is the virgin. The Bible starts with the virgin. And it goes all the way around, and the last one is uh, Leo, or Libra. That is the lion. You get to the end of the book of Revelation, that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, now, um, it's a very interesting study to, to look at. Now, in Revelation chapter number 12, there is a sign, a great wonder in heaven. This woman is, she's got the sun at her head. She's got the moon at her feet. Now watch this. She's got the sun in her head, the moon at her feet, and she's with child. And she's fixing to bring forth the child. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's Virgo, the virgin. Now, you're looking, uh, you'll see the moon at her feet and the sun at her head. Um, now, you're looking at this going, I don't see a woman. Um, well, let me see if I can help you. This is the way they look at it. Uh, this is the sun at her head, the moon at her feet. And of course, that's Leo, the lion, uh, and you'll see, uh, uh, there's his head, you know, and his body. Anyway, it's what they come up with. So, here's what happens. Certain times, every so often, there's Jupiter. You got Jupiter, you got the moon at her feet, you got Jupiter there. Um, there's Mercury, Mars, all this kind of stuff. Let me see if I go, let me get a color picture there better. Now you can see that better. Uh, and there's the woman Leo, there's this constellation called Virgo, the Virgin. 
Jupiter, um, you got the sun at her head, the moon at her feet, just like it says in Revelation chapter 12. Every so often, Jupiter, this constellation moves, and Jupiter goes in right in here to where her womb is and stays for nine months and then comes out. So Jupiter moves into her womb and stays for nine months and comes out. Revelation chapter number 12, there was a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, sun in her head, moon in her feet, or <clears throat> had uh, 12 stars, and uh, you'll see uh, there's your 12 stars at her head, or excuse me, yeah, uh, crowned with 12 stars. Well, there's Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And every so often, uh, and I can't remember, I have to look it up, but every so often, <laughs> Jupiter will move, this constellation moves, obviously, and it goes into her womb for nine months and then comes out. And this is what happens in chapter number 12. Now, with all of that said, let's go to 15. Let's go to 15. Uh, and like I said, some people don't. Um, this is just, I'm going to hit this and move on. Some people like that kind of stuff, and some people don't, but it is in, in, in the Bible. Look at 15, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled with the wrath of God. Now, what's going to happen in 15? We've already, we've already finished... Uh, all of, remember we did the last half of uh, what the Antichrist was doing, the last half of what the 144,000 did, all that kind of thing. In 15, we're going to start the what people call the seven vials. Some people call them the seven bowl judgments. Bowl, something, uh, it, it's something like, it almost looks like a perfume bottle that you would put uh, some, a liquid in and pour out. Uh, what do you want to call it, a, a flask or a, a bowl or a, what uh, the Bible called a vial, these seven vials. Uh, it's something that's going to be uh, poured out like a cup. That's what's fixing to happen. We're fixing to go through those uh, seven. Now let me give you the layout real quick. Uh, here, all right, you remember when we first started the book of Revelation, chapter number six, I believe it was, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seals. There they are, right there. Well, and then um, um, we had those, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, you remember all of those, that matched up with the seals. All right, we've already went through the seven trumpets. We talked about those, and I forgot what chapter that was. Um, and then tonight... Hopefully, hopefully at night we're going to deal with what this calls the bowls. Vials, same thing. There's seven of them. Now, again, some of this is going to be repetitive, but I don't know who's watching on, on the camera. I don't know who's watching, and they may just be tuning in. And, uh, and I just want to get everybody on the same page. You remember I told you, all of these things are going on at the same time. The trumpets don't start after the seals are done. They're all going on at the same time at different intervals. The seven trumpets and the seven bowels, the bowls, the vials, are going on toward the last half of the tribulation, toward that the last part, the last three and a half years, is where the, all that's going on at. I give you my the illustration that I got. You go to a circus and you got four rings going, and you got the marsh, the grand, uh, whatever he's called, stands in the middle. And he says, Over here is going on, you know, this over here. And I want you to pay attention over there and look over here now. All of those things are going on at the same time, but obviously he can't tell you 
all four things at the same time. So he has to say here, then he has to go over there. So, so John does the same thing. He says, let me tell you all about the seven seals over here. All right, we're done with that. Now, let me go over here and tell you about the seven trumpets over here. But they're going on at the same time the seals are. Now, let me go tell you about the vow judgments over there. Now, I'm going to tell you about those seven. They're all going on at the same time. So, uh, hopefully that helps and clears up a few things about uh, the book of Revelation. We'll go back to that in, in just a few minutes. Now, let me get back to this sign in chapter 15. <clears throat> in chapter 15, there's a great wonder. It says, um, seven angels having the seven last plagues. Well, if y'all remember in chapter number one, chapter number one of Revelation, do y'all remember us going over how the stars and the angels are related? Um, remember the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. Revelation chapter number one. All right. In the heavens, there is what we call a constellation called Pleiades. Pleiades, you say, where'd you come up with that? Pleiades is an actual constellation, has a bunch of, bunch of stars involved in it. But only seven can be seen with the human eye. Now, it's also called the, the constellation of the seven stars, obviously. It's also called what they call a cluster of grapes. You look at that, it uh, gives off the appearance of a cluster of grapes. Well, if you remember last week when we finished, in verse 20 of 14, and the wine press was trodden without the city, and the blood came out of the wine press, and so on and so forth. We're talking about a cluster of grapes. Matter of fact, he said, verse 19, the angel thrust in the sickle, gather the vine of the earth, and cast the great wine press of the wrath of God. This cluster of grapes. And then in chapter 15, we have a sign in heaven. That is the seven wonder, the seven stars, these seven angels, given off the appearance of a cluster of grapes. Now, we're not through. Um, this Pleiades. Now, you may say, okay, where, where is this found in the Bible? All right, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, it's found in Job, Job 38, and verse 31 and 32. And I've got it on the screen for you. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? Or loose the bands of Orion. Orion is another constellation. Uh, verse 32. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth, another constellation? Or canst thou guide Arcturus, which is another constellation? He's talking about all the constellations in the, uh, in the outer space. So Pleiades is one of these that Job talks, talks about that looks like this cluster of grapes. It's also known as the seven sisters. Notice, seven angels here in 15. This great sign in heaven. Now, here are the seven stars that you can see. Remember, Pleiades is a bunch of stars. But there's only seven you can see with the naked eye. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there they are. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you can really. All right. When I tell you what that is, you'll be able to see it better. Does anybody see a coffee cup with the handle? You see the handle and the coffee cup barely tilted. How many don't see that? Did everybody see the coffee cup? Miss Jane, you see the coffee cup? Mm -hmm. All right. And it's being tilted like something's fixing to be poured out. You see that? Now, every so often, 
You remember that same Jupiter that went into Virgo and, and stayed in there nine months? Jupiter comes across Pleiades and tilts that coffee cup to where it's pouring something out. Every so often that thing slowly tilts as the obviously the universe is, is moving. You said, that doesn't interest me. Well, it does me because Psalm 19 says the heavens tells the story. The heavens declare the glory of God. It will tell you the whole story. From Virgo the Virgin all the way to, to uh, Libra the Lion, or Leo, whichever it is, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. From the Virgin all the way plumb to the Lion, you're going to have the story in the constellations of heaven. I ain't got time to tell you no more about that. But that's the sign in heaven of the seven stars, seven angels, holding the seven vials fixing to be poured out upon this earth. And there it is, called Pleiades. Now, all right. <clears throat> Let's get back to Revelation 15. <laughs> now, somebody's probably watching going, my goodness, I didn't know it was going to be in science class. But you would be surprised how that Bible lines up with what goes on in that outer space. Uh, matter of fact, in Gen I got time to show you, but Genesis chapter 1, in the creation, when God made the stars, he said, I made them for signs and seasons. For signs. Signs in the sky. Tell you a story. Um, anyway, all right, Revelation 15. <clears throat> And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. All right, he's fixing to pour that out. All right, verse two. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over the image, over his mark, over his number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the hearts of God. Now, in verse 2, here's something else that's repetitive. When we were in Revelation chapter 4, and I was talking to you about that water canopy up there. And in heaven, right before you, after you leave the second heaven, you go off into the third heaven. Right before you get off of there, you've got to pass through a body of water. Y'all remember that in Revelation chapter 4? And on the top side, it's frozen. Sea of glass. So there are people that leave out of this tribulation that did not take the mark, that did not bow down to this image, that did not worship the Antichrist, and now they're standing on the sea of glass, worshiping God, uh, they're in heaven. So, they got from down here to up there. Alright? It's not us. We leave out over here. This is tribulation saints, those that didn't take the mark, they are standing now on the sea of glass. That's why I know 15 is toward the end uh, of the tribulation. All right, look at verse uh, 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou uh, king of saints. And of course, the song of Moses is found in Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 and also Exodus 15, 1. Uh, Exodus 15, verse 1, Deuteronomy 32, you'll find the songs of Moses. Uh, how they were delivered from Pharaoh, all that kind of thing. Well, these folks have been delivered from who? The Antichrist, a type of Pharaoh. Uh, or Pharaoh's a type of the Antichrist. Verse 4. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, and thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. So there's a tabernacle. Remember, I told you this before. There is a heavenly tabernacle in heaven, and it's open. Um, now look at verse 6. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in purple, or excuse me, clothed in, in pure and white linen. 
and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Now, you say, what in the world is that? Well, in the Old Testament, the high priest, um, when the Bible calls something a girdle, it's not what you're thinking a girdle is. A high priest would put on that breastplate and he'd have those 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And if they tied around, right, there's a back to it and a front to it, they tied around here, and yes, it kept everything, it was tight, and that's why the Bible calls it a golden girdle. It's got all these stones on it. And uh, it covered their their breasts. Now, these angels, they're not um, they're not women. And a lot of people have the idea, and I don't have time to do a study on angels or nothing, but everybody thinks angels are blonde-headed, blue-eyed uh, women playing harp, sitting on uh, a fluffy little cloud, eating cream cheese and all that kind of thing. That's not what angels are. Um, just to give you one example, the angels that came to visit Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were men. Uh, they were not long-haired, uh, you know, blonde, blue-eyed women. They were men. So anytime you hear angels, automatically our mind, because of television, because of commercials and all that, we automatically think, uh, it's, you know, it's a woman with a bunch of wings on, and they're flapping their wings and they're flying around, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's not what angels are. I ain't got time to tell you no more about that. Um, anyway, now verse 7. And one of the four beasts uh, gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, there we are, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now, let me pause and tell you what's going on right there in those last couple of verses. In the temple in heaven, you got seven <coughs> angels in that temple filling these vials up, these bowls, these perfume bottles, whatever you want to call them, cups, coffee cups, whatever. They're filling these up, seven of them, full of the wrath of Almighty God. And they're doing it in the temple. And what they're going to do, they're going to come out of the temple and they're going to pour them onto the earth. And we're going to read about them in just a second. They're going to pour them out onto the earth. And the Bible says that in verse 8, the temple was filled with smoke and all that kind of thing from its power. No man was able to enter into the temple. So, you say, why wasn't anybody able to enter into the temple until those angels got through filling up their vials full of them? All right, in the Old Testament, when you went into the temple, you were going in there to make intercession for somebody, to, to intercede between God and man. In other words, the high priest would go in there and say, God, don't kill them. Give them mercy. Show them mercy. Give them another chance. Please help them. Okay? Old Testament. But here in the tribulation, God don't let anybody come into the temple. Why? Because there is no mercy. There's no reason for anybody to come in the temple and ask God for mercy. He ain't giving it. He ain't giving mercy. Now, um, I, a lot of the TV preachers, they get on and they love, oh, you got to love everybody, oh, just love everybody. And that's good. That's wonderful. Yes, God is love. But here's a side of God that people don't preach about much. This is the wrath of God. And you say, well, why, why is it happening now? Well, have you ever just stopped and, and looked at the world and say, God, how long are you going to let people get away with doing what they're doing? They're not getting away with it. You say, well, it looks like they're getting away with it. It might look like it. they ain't getting away with it. God's fixing to pour out out of those vials. He's fixing to pour out on this earth and ain't nobody going to stop it. That's what's happening in 15. Now, in 16, I'm fixing to hit these real quick. In 16, he's going to give us what's in those vials. Now, let's look at it. 
verse number 1 of 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying unto the seven angels, Go your way and pour out the vial, the wrath of God, upon the earth. All right, we just said that. And the first went out, excuse me, the first went and poured out his vial. Notice he is, the angel is a man, his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sword upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. All right? So now this matches the sixth plague of, of Pharaoh or of uh, Moses in Egypt. The sixth plague. Remember they had bowls and stuff and popped up all over them. And um, so this first five, he's going to pour it out. It's going to be about halfway through the middle of the tribulation, about halfway, the first vial is going to pour out. And men that have taken, <coughs> anybody that's taken the mark of the beast are going to break out in these noisome, um, uh, you say, um, uh, the noisome is a is a old English word for malignant. It's malignant and grievous, very painful. Very um, deep, uh, a spot, these um, marks, these sores. It almost, it almost pictures, almost gives us an idea of leprosy, of uh, what is it, Leviticus 13 or so, 14. talks about leprosy, breaking out over the whole body. And this is what um, it gives the indication of. Now let's look at the second Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Now, all right. Um, I don't remember. Let's see. Maybe you have to help me. Remember. But which one was it? I think it was the second trumpet. The second trumpet, when we read about the second trumpet, he turned the water into blood. See? That's what I'm telling you. These things are going on at the same time. Uh, so I think that, you have to check me out, but I think it's the second trumpet that, uh, remember, look, second trumpet, now, they've got, them, they've got them lined up together. Now, according, if I'm correct, that second trumpet well, that is. That's right. The second, the second vial would match up with the second trumpet. Yeah, that's, there we go. Okay. And um, he's going to turn this water into, into blood. And just like Moses did and all that kind of thing. Now, look at uh, verse 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. And they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another one at the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. All right, here we go. Watch. All through this tribulation, they've been killing uh, martyrs, they didn't get, matter of fact, Hitler killed what? Six million Jews? God's people has been martyred all through time. God says this. Can you just, just think. All right, just think for a second. All the blood, I know, it's, uh, hopefully you've already eaten something. All the blood of people that, uh, of God's people, the martyrs that have died at tribulation, their blood is just sort of huddling down, and God says, I'm fixing up. Make, I'm going to turn the water to blood and make you drink their blood. You kill all these martyrs. <coughs> now I'm going to make you drink the blood of the martyrs. This is a, you're saying, are you talking about the same God you preached about Sunday? Yep. The same one that's the great physician. When I preach Sunday, I'm talking about the great physician over here. But if you'll accept him, yes. If you reject him, you better watch out. 
it ain't going to be perfect. <coughs> That's the part of God. People don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to tell. But hey, you've got to tell both sides of the story. Um, all right, let's look at verse number eight. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now, look at this. The fourth angel comes out and pours his vial upon the earth, and the sun goes increasingly hot. That means you just step out of your house, and you automatically are scorched, sunburned from head to toe from the brightness of the sun. As a... As a, 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 a a plague upon this earth. You imagine? And 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 you're thinking, and like I would be thinking, it seems like somebody would say, God, we're sorry. Please lighten up. Mm -mm. They curse him. <coughs> They're standing out there getting scorched by the sun, drinking bloody water, and cursing God. And we're thinking, you say, you say, preacher, how can that be? That proves how deceitful at the heart he is a man. How bad can man get? We haven't seen bad yet. It is bad, yes. It is bad. But in this tribulation period, when God is bringing the wrath of Almighty God upon this earth, and they're still cursing him and won't repent. Ain't that something? Uh, look at verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And guess what they did? Verse 11. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Now, you talking about wicked. This is the same reason God destroyed this earth uh, by water in Noah's day. Because men were this wicked. And now it's going to go back to that very same thing. And God promised, remember? God promised he wouldn't destroy it again with water. And he won't. But this time it's going to be by fire. Um, so they... now. Let me pause and say something about this. They poured out the vial on the seat of the beast. Now, uh, I don't want to go into a long, a lot of detail because in 1718, we're going to talk about the seat of the beast, the Antichrist. He's going to have a seat where he sits to rule. Um, just, um, just, Bring your imagination. Let's just put ourselves in the tribulation for a second. And the Antichrist has already said we got to get the mark in our hand. Oh, matter of fact, just uh, two days ago. Oh, I meant to put that on the screen for y'all so you wouldn't think I was making it up or lying. A credit card company has now come out with uh, a way to make turn your hand into a credit card. No more credit cards in your wallet. You just use your hand. Wow. Every day that Bible's coming alive. Um, anyway, let's imagine ourselves. Let's get back to what I was thinking about. Imagine yourselves in the middle of the tribulation period. And uh, the beast has, we've done turned our hands into credit cards or whatever. And uh, we're living in a cashless society and all of a sudden, your eye pad, your eye pad, and your eye phone. You ever notice, I think I've told you all that, but the symbol of the iPhone and the iPad is an apple with a bite out of it. That goes back to Genesis. When Satan asked Eve, take of the fruit. 
the all-seeing eye. Now they can watch us. Have you ever wondered why you can be talking to somebody about something? Talking about, um, and all of a sudden you're just phoning around on your phone searching, and all of a sudden what you talked about has started popping up on your phone. You ever noticed that? Even on Facebook. You're not sitting here talking with me. I could, I could be talking to y'all think, and just say something like, uh, uh, boy, I wish I had, uh, I don't know, uh, I just, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in the market for a new vehicle. Charlie, I'm in the market for a new vehicle. Well, me and him talk for 10, 15 minutes about a new vehicle. I get on Facebook the next time, and ads that pop up are about new vehicles, shopping for a new vehicle. Anybody ever notice that? Watch it next time. It's an amazing thing. Where was it going? Oh. And uh, <laughs> Satan's seat, the Antichrist. There's so much that your mind just goes wild. You're in the, you're in the uh, tribulation. And uh, y'all rem- know how it is when the emergency thing comes on and your phones go off <laughs> and everybody's phone starts talking about a tornado coming through or a rainstorm or uh, uh Amber Alert. <coughs> Think. The Antichrist wants to give a message to the whole world. And all of a sudden, your iPhone goes off, your iPad, whatever your own, your iCar, your own star comes on. Please pause, whatever you're doing, and listen to an important message from our leader. And all of a sudden, he comes on and gives you what he wants to tell you. Is he got a seat. He'll rule the world from that one seat. Well, <coughs> this angel is going to pour that vial out upon that seat. <coughs> that seat. Upon the seat of the beast. Um, and uh, the kingdom was full of darkness. So they can't see. That happened in Moses' day as well, if you remember. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to 12. I got a few more minutes. Verse 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, um, all right, you remember I've told you again, this matches up with one of the trumpets talking about the Euphrates River. Remember I told you about those angels that are bound the Euphrates River? We talked about the Bermuda Triangle. Y'all remember that? Okay. In Revelation 16, this sixth uh, vial that's going to be poured out, God's going to dry up the river Euphrates. Now if you remember, uh, let me see if I can, hang on. I had a map, didn't I? I don't know if I can see that anymore. <coughs> uh, I'm looking for the Euphrates River and I can't I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Alright, anyway. Forget that idea. I didn't uh, uh, it wasn't good. Alright. I thought I had a map for the Euphrates River. The kings of the east. China, Japan. North Korea, South Korea, all to the east of the Euphrates River, okay? God's going to dry that up to where, now, I know what you're thinking. If they want to attack Israel, they fly a plane over there or, or, or go across in a boat, yes. But if God dries that Euphrates River up, those, those um, army men can walk across on dry ground and go right over into Jerusalem and attack. Um, and it's going to be a it's going to be a battle on the ground in the Battle of Armageddon, the Valley of Megiddo, where the blood is going to be up to the horses' bridle for two hundred miles. Remember, we talked about that well, last week or week four. This is where that's going to happen. God's going to dry up that valley, the, uh, the Euphrates River. So it'll be easy for the kings of the east to get across and to attack. Um, 
All right, look at verse 13. Remember I told you, always watch out for 13. Guess what happens in 13? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's the unholy trinity. The devil always duplicates God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, the devil does the same thing. The beast, the false prophet, the dragon. Three unclean uh, spirits like frogs. All right? Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils. And what are they doing? Next two words. Working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Just said that's why he dried up your, uh, the river of Euphrates. So now we've got these spirit, these unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the beast, the false prophet, the dragon. They are spirits of devils working miracles. Do you mean to tell me that the devil can work miracles too? <coughs> Do you mean to tell me that some of that stuff we might see on television, they're working for the other team? Isn't yeah. that something? You better be careful. Well, be careful about the guy that gets on there and says, I want you to buy this little bottle of oil or a bottle of water that I got out of the Jordan. Actually, he got it out of his sink in the kitchen. Okay? You, you send me $29.95. And I'm going to send you this bottle of oil, this bottle of water. And you drink a couple of sips of this every day, and it's going to change your life. You're going to have a, uh, money coming into your, to your uh, mailbox like you ain't never seen. Your bills are going to get mysteriously paid. That's a bunch of junk. That ain't even good belonging. Don't fall for that kind of stuff. All right. Um, now, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into the place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. So now I know we're getting toward the end. Right? We're getting very close to the end of the tribulation because we're talking about Armageddon. <coughs> And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven and from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, which was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Can you imagine that? And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell and, the great, and, um, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give her, her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, ten pounds. Can you imagine hail weighing ten pounds? Come in, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about a hailstorm now. I'm not talking about just one or two. I'm talking about a hailstorm, 10 pound balls coming out of the sky. And surely, surely this will change men's hearts and make them turn and repent. Well, let's see what happens. Every stone about a weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. You see that? They still would repent. You said, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say this. If you ain't saved, and you know somebody that ain't saved, you better tell them to get saved. Because that right there is not going to be something you want to hang around with, For sure. This is where all the wrath of God is going to be poured out on this earth. And... Uh, I mean, without mixture. 